Howard here once again with a, uh, another lesson on the doors. This is Love Me Two Times, of course. And uh, just like People Are Strange, it's, it's just a really cool little blues lick. Um, and uh, we're in the key of E, and it's a very blues-based tune, of course. And so let's jump right in. Uh, but once again, he used his fingers, so feel free to do that if you, you like that sound or it feels more comfortable or whatever. Uh, but I'm going to be using a pick because I like that sound. I like the attack of it, okay? So the first riff is like so. So you can do that a couple of different ways, okay? You can play it with one finger if you want to. Just rocking your finger down, which I'll go through. Or you can play it that way, the way I was doing it with two fingers. I kind of have done it both ways over the years, and I guess it just depends on where my head's at <laughs> at that time. You can even use your first finger. Uh, this might be a great way to do it, though. And again, if you're more comfortable with two fingers, kind of going back and forth between the two. But we are on the second fret on the A string. And then we hit the open D string. Back to the A string at the second fret. And then we go to the second fret on the D string. I'm doing it with one finger right now so you can kind of see it real clearly. Back to the second fret on the A string. D string open again, and then to the second fret on the D string. Okay, now an interesting note about that before we go any further, if you listen to the original recording, he actually plays an open A string one time. And you can clearly hear that. I don't know if it was just a mistake or he tossed it in because it sounded kind of cool. So you can do that if you want to. Instead of playing the second fret on the A string, he played the A string open. But the rest of the time through the tune, he just plays it the way I just showed you. But again, what you'll hear on the recording is... just into it okay uh, so the rest of the riff is the top E string twice and then we're doing a trill uh, preferably with the first finger if you can uh, get that going uh, at the first fret on the G string so it's open and hammering on and pulling off so you get the whole riff Notice I'm hitting the E string twice, trilling, hitting it twice again, trilling, and then hitting it once. And I'm definitely applying some palm muting to uh, the top E string because uh, you don't want it ringing through the trill, okay? All right, so there is the first riff. And as a quick note, they're traveling at about this tempo. So it can be a little bit of a challenge if you're not used to playing uh, your trills with your first finger quite that quick, okay? All right, and then we move into the uh, next bit. That's That covers the verses right there where Morrison is singing the main verses over that riff. And then we head here. <laughs> So coming off of the verses, uh, you hit an A triad, but you do it like so. You hit the open A string, and then you play the triad, seven on the D string, six on the G string, five on the B string. And I just pop down and hit that uh, fifth fret on the first string for the high A note. You can also just form it as a whole chord. However you want to do it is fine. So what I'm doing there is after I've played the, I come back to the 6th fret on the G string, and then the 8th fret 
on the B string, and that makes a nice A7 sound. And then it's back to the riff. And then you bust out and play the next chord. Now moving to this next chord is probably the weirdest part in the song. Uh, this is, he varies this every time he plays it and uh, it's, it's a little bit difficult to hear exactly what he does. Maybe, you know, uh, if you really dig in, you can get it. But I'm gonna show you basically the first way that he plays it and that's sort of the blueprint for the other ways he plays it. But just like I do with my students, I encourage you to, you know, freeform it a little bit. You know, uh, once you kind of know what the part is, Feel free to mix it up like he did, and especially live. You know, you're going to hear these guys do everything a little bit differently. Uh, but we come off of the riff. <laughs> yes, indeed. So let me explain that. The chord is basically this. You've got the second fret on the G string and the third fret on the B string. The first E string is open. Um, it's it's sort of like, um, technically the chord would be a D7 most likely, but he's got that open E string in it, which makes it sound really cool. Uh, digging through the recording and trying to really tap into what he's doing, the most important thing is to get this little lick, this little riff in time with what he's got going. <laughs> So I've got that tab down for you on the screen, and maybe that's the best way to explain it. Just dig into the tab. Uh, but let me play it really slow for you. So there isn't a lot to explain because it's mostly just uh, picking out the notes of the chord, the arpeggios. But that one little lick inside the chord... That's a bend at the third fret on the B string, a bend and a release. Flick off, pull off to the first string, and then fall back into the chord. Now, after we've done that uh, intriguing little part, we hit a C7 chord as a bar chord. Uh, it's a C7 chord at the eighth fret. I'm barring at the eighth fret with my second finger on the ninth fret on the G string and my ring finger on the 10th fret on the A string and my pinky on the 11th fret on the uh, B string. And you wanna pop that chord on and off. You wanna press the chord down with your left hand as you strike so you don't get a... Uh, you want that chord to be really staccato. So attack it at the same time, get a good um, syncopation going between the left and the right hand. So you come off of this part. Okay, I hope that all makes sense. And then we move into a set of chords. Uh, this is the way I choose to play them. I think they sound uh, nice and full. It's a G chord. back to the riff which has a variation so we'll get to that but I'm playing a G bar chord just a G major at the third fret and I'm playing a D7 like you would play a C7 but uh, up a whole step so I've got the fifth fret on the A string fourth fret on the D string fifth fret on the G string and third fret on the B string so you want to stay off of the first and the sixth string the top and the bottom strings <laughs> Just move that down, okay, a whole step. So we have. And it goes to a B7, which you can play full on if you want to. But again, if you're staying off of the top and the bottom strings, it's, it's easy and pretty cool to just go. Like that. Just take your fingers right off the edge of the uh, neck. <laughs> a fake fret over there. And that sounds pretty good. to the riff. So off of that C7 that we had up high, <laughs> so 
so as I said, we move back to the uh, main riff right there, but um, it's a, a subtle variation, all right? <laughs> So he's got the riff going as he had it before. All the way up to the trill. But instead of going, he plays this. So you, you're doing the trill, you come back and, uh, you know, hit the E string one time, the top E string, or twice if you want to, it doesn't really matter. And then you just hammer on open G string to the first fret. And of course we're back to the A and the uh, sort of A7 uh, pattern that he throws in there. Uh, it's kind of cool though because he'll do stuff like kind of bend the B string slightly to get a cool sound so uh, you can add that in there as well. And then again it moves to the stranger part. And uh, there's going to be some variation in that like I was saying earlier but uh, don't get too hung up on that you know. Uh, kind of play it your own way um, or the first way or, or change it up from the way I've shown you, okay? Feel free to uh, mosh it up any way you see uh, as doable for you. And then of course we rumble through everything just as we did before from the C7. And we add the E7 sharp nine. So this is just before the uh, keyboard solo, okay? So we work through the chord progression just as we did before, G, D7, C7, B7, and then we hit the E7 sharp 9, which is the 7th fret on the A string with your 2nd finger, the 6th fret on the D string with your 1st finger, 7th fret on the G string, and 8th fret on the B string. And again, just like the C7, you're popping that chord very staccato, attacking it, as the pick goes down. And then it's back to the chords. Uh, so then the keyboard solo comes up and uh, basically uh, he's kind of vamping behind the keyboard with a little bluesy thing. E string and the second fret on the D string and then again he plays the so that's kind of cool and he comes back to the and then it's through that same set of chords again D excuse me G D7 C7 B7 and the E7 sharp 9 again and as we head back to the riff again, uh, we reach the third variation that he plays. And these, I do think, are worth nailing because there's, it's such a significant part of the, of the tune, right? So it starts out the same way, of course. This time you're trilling at the second fret on the D string and you can use whatever finger you want. Whatever works best for you is what is best for you. A quick trill there and I swing up and hit the E string once and then I hammer on. So it's kind of like the one he did over here. But he's doing it here instead. you make your way back to the so 
And I think that just about covers all aspects of the song. And uh, hopefully the tab is very helpful uh, with this one. And uh, thanks for watching, as always. And I hope to see you soon.